All right, welcome back to the Beyond Nemesis podcast with a vengeance. That's what this episode's called because we've been off for what three weeks, right? Two weeks, two weeks. No, no, two? July fourth, and then the last week. Before, actually, wait a minute. How, how what what week are we? I thought this is the third week of July. Well, yeah, it is. We were off yeah. Fourth of July weekend, the eleventh. I don't know because but we're back. You're moving. Yeah, we're back now. Yeah, I had no internet there, which really sucked, by the way. No internet for what a did week. you do? Did you just rely on cellular, cellular to get you by? I used my company phone as a hotspot to play Valorant until I got this giant warning on my phone that I had exposed. I have a I went over my company phone's uh, data plan. <laughs> I, I had been shut down, uh, and then I did. I mean, it was kind of nice because we were moving in and like adjusting to the house. So as as much as I like, it sucked not being able to do certain things. It let us like focus and just kind of like unplug and just. Do the house stuff that needed to be done. So that that part was nice. Um, so speaking of being off for two weeks, I guess it didn't come out that long ago, though. Uh, let's start this week with what I expect to be a great segment. The uh, discussion of Resident Evil on Netflix. And I'm going to let you roll with this one because I, I have you seen the whole thing? Have you watched the whole I thing? Finished, I finished watching it all okay. last night. I, I have. Yeah, I, I'll tell you how how i made it did, but you did, you, you did you watch it you start and then i'll, I'll, I'll kick oh, in with God. my two cents because I, I think this is gonna we got some hot takes i'm gonna guess i don't think we got hot takes i mean Not like hot all takes right. but like something to say <laughs> oh yeah I, oh, there's a lot to say besides just something but uh all right let me let me just say that like i don't think it was the worst thing in the world I think the worst gaming adaptation is definitely Halo TV show. I was going to ask what's worse. Yeah. Resident Evil or no, it's Halo. Halo. Halo, 100%. Um, like, Halo was just written so poorly. This Resident Evil show, actually, I think was written quite well in a lot of areas. And, like, I see a lot of, like, headliner titles from, like, IGN and GameSpot saying, like, this is the best video game adaptation ever. I hate ever. that review. I hate... I hate, I've, I've, I hate I've, reviews that have that. Yeah. I, I, I'm so sick every single resident evil thing that has come out the review has been this is the best resident evil adaption so far but it's still not good like every single one there's been like a hundred of them yeah like every single one says that i'm with them though actually i do agree i don't think it's a nine out of ten like most of those places have been like reviewing them yeah uh i think considering the quality and i they, that's something that is used a lot in like majority of reviews is like well the quality of this compared to like previous resident evils is actually really it has good budget yeah like it's it's got a pretty decent production value to it and i think even like the the digital assets are like significantly better like compared to like halo where halo is legit just artifacting like both on the screen but also just like missing textures all together um like in those two comparisons it's just like all right well the show is not bad and the story itself is actually interesting i actually did not dislike the story i think that it was a, they did do a lot of interesting things as a resident evil fan like they they decided to tell a story about wesker's mm-hmm. side of the things i don't want to i don't want to like ruin it and i know it just literally came out last week yeah but they did some interesting stuff with wesker that i really did appreciate and i had a really interesting conversation about wesker uh last night in a like in a group conversation because they did a race swap with wesker on this mm-hmm. and they've even like hinted at even quite literally changing wesker's race by like bending a little bit of that narrative mm-hmm. to fit what they're trying to do with it and like mm-hmm. i'm not saying that to create controversy but that's mm-hmm. legit what they said mm-hmm. um and i i get that you know there's been some like yeah i don't i I have my own per, per, like my own things about what I feel about race swapping, but that's not important to the review because I actually liked Lance Reddick in this. Mm-hmm. I think he's phenomenal in anything he does. He mm-hmm. is an amazing actor, and I think no one else could have done a better Wesker. I mean, like if you're gonna throw another like you know African American or you know black person inside of that, it would be Idris Elba, but he'd be good at any role he plays in. Yeah, but it was good. He did great. The rest of the cast is what bothered me and the <laughs> fucking writing in this show man it was pure zootopia adrenaline porn. cringe zootopia porn <laughs> man dude i was like i wasn't really like listening i was just like sitting there with migraine on episode one and i just heard it like i had like double take i was like excuse me and 
like I, I already knew that I just did not like Jade at the very beginning. I cannot fucking stand her character so much. And like I get that they're not trying to write Jade to be a hero. Although I feel like that's very contradictive of the point of any Resident Evil story is mm -hmm. that there's always a hero at the focal point of it all. Yeah. Why are we why are we telling such a a bastardized story of Resident Evil heroes mm -hmm. in here? Um and also I just didn't like any other character to be honest. I think that whenever it came to like the others development and all of it, it was it was just weird teenage angst that I think they thought was appropriate to throw I, in there. I don't want to cut you off. If you want to keep if you want to continue with your review, go ahead and then I'll, I'll, I'll chime in. I'll, let me let me finish real quick because I'm not gonna let you finish. It's just it was set up so good, but it still shows us at the end of the day, nobody still fucking gets it on what people yeah. want out of a Resident Evil movie. Like, yeah. we're still to this day in 2022, quite literally 20 years later, nobody still gets it. Mm -hmm. And I don't think, I think a lot of people are saying like, oh, the Mila, uh, Mia Jovovich uh, movies are better. Like, there's, those are special in their own way, but they're also terrible. It's because the they were one time. of the original high-budget video game Ad adaptations at like all that back at the time at all, and, period, then, yeah. and by the time we got to like the like the last tr like the, the last movie. three movies like they all they all went to trash at that point like Hold the on. first three were too bad actually in my Hold on one opinion. second one second but for the rest of those watching like legit just for the life of me could not fucking stand anybody here Are you good? You good? No. Yeah, yeah. You good? Yeah, right, I'm cool. fine. My wife called and she never calls, so I thought something was wrong. Oh, sorry guys. <laughs> uh, sorry to uh, interrupt your. Uh, I don't. What like word? Complaining. What, what word did I want to use? Complaining is the right word. Uh, what, what's what's the word in like a play when somebody goes on like a long solo Critique. speech? No. Oh. Uh, it's bothered me, but anyway. Yeah. Regardless, like it, it was. It was good bad that's you got, you that's got my good overall, out of it. <laughs> that's my that's my overall summary it was good bad like it yeah. did some cool things and there had like some pretty interesting story mechanisms that they did really well to bring back over from like the past games which I i've heard was that really cool. i've heard yeah that. they did they actually brought some stuff over but then they like also did some more annoying things like covid happened in this timeline so i'm just like oh i don't care about that yeah they did a lot of i think a lot of Netflix tropes. Mm -hmm. um, and by Netflix tropes, I think that's a pretty obvious like understanding of what I mean by that. They you tried like really hard to just make this. Yeah. And teenage family injecting. drama into a Resident Evil zombie horror story. Yeah. They tried to Ozark my Resident Evil. I, I've not. I, I watched Ozark for like four episodes and I fell off. It. Everybody tells me I need to finish it, but. Evan. Yeah. I've never watched it actually, but I just know enough about Ozark mm. to say like, "Hey, don't Ozark my my stuff." <laughs> so I, this was my, in fairness, I have not watched the entire series. That is because after the first forty minutes, I gave up on the entire series and shut it off. This was, I turned it off forty minutes in because I I resisted my urge to shut it off three times prior to that. 
uh one of the first times i think was when billy eilish music kicked in in the first maybe like 10 minutes of the series and the uh, other ant protagonist is also conveniently named billy uh, and also mm-hmm. dresses and looks like billy eilish as you have said um same problem as the Halo show. They forgot to make, with the exception of you know Lance Reddick as Wesker, any of the characters likable whatsoever. There's there's not. A, I mean, I'm all, I'm judging only in 40 minutes, and I get that because people could say, "Oh, you got to finish," and that's that's valid. But I don't feel bad when something is turns me off so much, just like shutting it off and being like, "Nope, I'm not doing it." Um, and then the last thing, I think the thing that really put me over the edge. I don't know why it was to straw that broke the camel's back was when they introduced the Irish guy with his hair standing straight up like he's Doc from uh, Back to the Future and like for no reason like a black axe drawn in like oil or something across his face as if to be like this is a character like they had to mark him to the big like this guy is a a significant supporting character like just his whole look but but just the whole weird stuff that's what I mean it's so corny I was like Okay, the world ends, and then this guy decides to like spike his hair and draw an X on his face. Like I, I don't know. It, it, okay, so I mean, like they did the generic copy paste. This is post apocalyptic world. Like, yeah, with that, like that's literally what it was. But um, I, I, I mean, I don't think it's as exaggerated as the way Mayer's putting it. He did have spiked hair, but it wasn't like all the way no, out here. No, it's not it like was, Goku or something. It's yeah, it was It was actually, like, I think reasonable for somebody who doesn't shower and is, like, putting whatever kind of war-marking face paint on him is. But I can tell you right now, his character is extremely short-lived. Okay, good. <laughs> there there was character, re- like, uh, development that actually I was also really happy for. There's a character after that episode. He's a, um, he's, like, this bigger fellow who has like some weird weird dialogue and i mean weird he starts he's the way he talks to you is so weird he'll go dude that wasn't cool like that's how he talks yeah dude you just shot me in the leg like that's the way he talks <laughs> yeah and it was like sounds like triggering. sounds like argyle from stranger things or something that you're impersonating it, it, it really was but like argyle like sold it. argyle made sense argyle yeah. sold it this guy i don't know what the hell he was selling but I, there's a point in the in the series he redeems himself and he does some really cool <laughs> shit that you were like not gonna be prepared for him to mm-hmm. do. I was like, oh, this guy's a mother like a pain in the ass. Like he's yeah. annoying. He's he's a bad character. What's his point? Then you see why he's in the position that he mm-hmm. is, and you're like, oh, redeemed. He's cool. He's one sta- of the he other. With us. The acting, like you said, to, and, and I don't mean to be disrespectful. I'm I am especially. When it comes to younger actors and actresses, I, t- I tend to, even if I don't like it, I tend to just j- just forgive it. I mean, it, they're young. You know what I mean? Like, you can't always be like, oh, this is, I don't want to sit there and be like, oh, this this kid's a trash actor. He's 12 years old. You know what I mean? Like, um, but the, the two female leads, the teenage leads, like, they're so unbearable. And whether it's the way the characters are written, which I think it is uh, poorly written, or their delivery of the material, I don't know. But there was one scene where, Wesker's on a call and both the kids rush home and the girl like slaps the tablet and she just yells like F you yeah. and like the most like generic like no human would actually say it and deliver that line that way. Oh, just, the like, hell? Yeah, yeah. It, it's like I, that was another one where I'm like, oh, my God, is this like am I watching like I, I, I don't know, like some teenage like drama show that was made. It- you know, it really for cable is a television. Drama sword show, man. Like it is somebody I, I watched a review after my first episode, and the way this person put it, it said, This is the CW of Resident Evil shows. Yeah, that's kind of how it felt to me. Yeah. And I think I, I think heard that's there's a, good that's elements, good. like you said. I heard that it connects the lore in some interesting ways. I heard like some of the Resident Evil like creatures, like liquors and stuff in it are are pretty good, like their use of them. Yeah. But they did really good. They didn't they didn't really lean in. We on deserve them, so anything. much more, though. <laughs> we do. And, so we we definitely deserve more. And it sucks that they have so much to offer, and they show that they're clearly capable of doing continuations of stories, but not actually one creating new dynamic characters mm-hmm. to do the to do the injections. Like I was mm-hmm. talking about, what Netflix does, everybody is fine with that. But instead, they use a character who's already a good plot point from the previous games 
and they do you know what they do for tokenizing purposes and like i while i disagree with that he did a fantastic job yeah. doing it but at the same time it's just there's so much you could keep doing with the show mm-hmm. and naturally you've got no actual experience with the games or no interest in actually selling well, a, a nice product one of the other things that i saw today and and on one hand i get it on the other hand it kind of set me off i saw the showrunner i was talking about a season two today in an interview and he or she i'm not sure you know who the who the person is truly i have no clue um said that they want to introduce claire lady whatever her name is from village lady d whatever and jill valentine in the second season and i'm like why do you do i I don't know why shows do this or or movies like you take source material you throw out 90 percent of it and then later you're like oh now we want to bring it in it's like why didn't you just bring them uh, you could save some of them for later like i get that as like further plot points but like why don't why did you throw everything out with the exception of like wesker and then, yeah. like, I, I just don't get it. Like, well, like, they'll cut out Chris Redfield, cut out Leon, cut out all those characters and stick some teenagers in there. Yeah, that, that, that'll so, do it. That'll do it. To give you a little bit of insight, they do tease season two with a yeah. specific character who's mm-hmm. very critical. Like, we, we know how critical that person is. I'm not mm-hmm. giving it away for those who haven't watched. But they actually did tease that made that, that show like, OK, some cool shit can go down here in a bit. Yeah. That's that's interesting. I'm Richard C see where that goes. I'm really I really like that character. That person's done a lot for the series. I want to know what happens with this in this timeline. Mm-hmm. I'd like to see that. So it's possible that, you know, the Leons, the Chris's, yeah, um, and everybody else can potentially come back. But if you're saying things like, Oh, I want to throw, you know, step on me lady into this, <laughs> like you're clearly saying that just so that we're Googling can the most attention. popular like Resident Evil, like like results yeah. like you googled resident evil took like the first three names they're like ooh, these characters are popular yeah literally anybody from the resident evil series can say what value does she have in here she her story those that entire village is so isolated that like it's a it's a smaller fraction of the story that paints a much bigger picture yeah. for the future of resident evil not what happened in the past ever. yeah like we we, yeah. we can look at the lore there's nothing that's happened in village prior that really impacts the, the entire the grander storyline eight star line yeah you know, that's something too and that that's one of something that one of my friends said who's a non-gamer now but when we were teenagers he's one of my best friends this day when we were teenagers um resident evil is probably both of our favorite series we're going back like 20 years now um and he was like he is a big movie guy though big movie and tv he actually directed his own movie and it won like a dozen awards it was crazy cool but anyway uh he was like why has nobody just made like why has nobody just adapted resident evil one two three and four like as they are like why has nobody done that and i was like it's like the simplest thing like and, like it sounds like so easy on paper and i'm just like i don't know you dude. could i don't know why do like, an entire season <laughs> you know, four, of resident evil one and two yeah. put together like, or or one and then two and three and then four or yeah or or just four movies i mean there's there's uh, and you all of it is there and i think you could definitely improve on the source material by you know dialogue and stuff and some of the plots in those games are obviously unrealistic now in, in many ways because they're you know video game uh logic but you could t- kind of adjust them to make them more same plot but just a little more you know smoother around the edges kind of thing and even shinji mikami the creator of resident evil and resident evil 4 who's not working on the Resident Evil 4 remake, you know, he wrote the Resident Evil 4 story and he was like, I really hope they make this story better in the, in the remake of Resident Evil 4 because the story that we wrote, like, it, it could be improved upon. <laughs> I yeah. mean, like, this is the dude who wrote it. So it's like, why has nobody just done that? It seems like, I don't know. We'll Instead, they're like... the games, you know? But yeah. I, I'm, I, I like where the games are at. Again, uh... I said it last night to some to my friends. I was like, again, like Hollywood just keeps showing us that they will never get it and that their market will continuously fall and fail to video games because video games just continue to be a more authentic experience. Yeah, I I, I just it, it it's so. It, it kills me because there's so many of these th- adaptions that are like a step or two away from being great or, or they get you know, a few of the things. And it's like, 
if you had just tried a little bit harder or brought in some consultants who could speak with more authority or there's always there's always something holding it back that really should be a simple fix you know what i mean yeah. like you just totally wrote this character wrong you know and, and you destroyed the entire thing and, it, uh, and they always miss they always miss except with the exception of like arcane or or castlevania um no they do fantastic like, and stranger things like they always they know whatever original content can come out and like yeah. castlevania i wouldn't call it original content but yeah in terms of just like stranger things it's just the russo brothers are clearly like on a completely different level i just of... mean like gaming adaptions specifically. oh gaming adaptions yeah. okay oh, yeah. yeah they're always like one I step mean, away from or two to be honest to be honest, Castlevania isn't exactly a prodigy child whenever it comes to respecting lore. No. It's so off. But they made something but it's still very so good. Right, right. Because I mean you don't need you can change things as long as you change them to still be compelling and entertaining. And the reason why like uh Arcane did so good is because Riot was at the helm of it all. Like, yeah, right. I'm pretty sure they had like some Netflix asks in there, but knowing Riot, they're like, we already have all that in place. We don't have that for Yeah you know marketing purposes that's just how we've written our story and it right. fits properly and that right. felt authentic yeah wow, so man. speaking of gaming and uh gaming related television adaptions are you ready for this grounded i, I laughed so hard when i saw this because you were like I, this was like a month ago you're like, i never want to hear about grounded ever again like they talk about this game way too much and then today i was like breaking news grounded television show uh <laughs> adaption announced I'm just like baffled at this point that Grounded still continues to be successful out of the most random explosion possible. I don't understand it, but I'm also happy at the same time yeah. that it's seeing success despite yeah. being an actual closet project. Well, I think it was made by 13 people. I read at one point that the team yeah. was 13 people. But what made me laugh about this is like, this is literally... <laughs> So not only was it yeah, a very small project, and it has been a success from what I understand, but this has to be like, it's basically an exact clone of Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, which is a movie. So we've gone like full circle now. We've got a, a movie that was turned into a game that is now being, or we've got a game that is a clone of a movie that is now being like reverse engineered to be turned into a movie again or a TV show or, or whatever, you know, it's just like. I can't believe they made an 80s movie based off a game called Grounded. And now they're turning it back into uh, a <laughs> show. That's yeah, crazy, it's, it's, man. It's this weird circle of like, uh, this doesn't Grounded have a network. It's so attack. powerful, man. I don't know how it keeps getting more and more powerful each time, man. <laughs> uh so what was what was the um what's the like the the project like the project size of it do we know like do we know where it's going to be streamed because no, it's going to be streamed yeah i haven't i was hoping to see like is it going to be netflix amazon prime i don't think a studio is even attached yet like i think there's writers somewhere putting it together and then somebody will pick it up i assume mm -hmm. hopefully not paramount plus hopefully hopefully nobody <laughs> honestly at this point <laughs> I don't want any more video game movie yet. That, that the one, games I don't see, care about. That is one, though. This is what's going to happen. That is one that's going to be actually amazing. Because it, ha it basically has nothing to lose, and it has it has total creative... They can do whatever they want with it, right? Like, like they're not going to, like, break the lore. They're not going to break some some character that fans really love. And, and it also it's also one that you could totally watch as a non-gamer probably and just jump right into it like arcane and let's, just let's not worry let's talk about something think about the service value grounded is as it continues to expand it is a game as a service from a very well reputable studio owned by the next largest service company in the world that is now going to be creating another product and a service platform yeah like it's kind of scary knowing how content is now going to be distributed and with things like resident evil and halo being like the poster childs of what you can do wrong and good at the same time it's just i don't know i have i have no hope for the future except for sonic sonic only gets <laughs> sonic is the only one that gets the pass and it still uh, has its sonic phones. when's that sonic netflix series coming out is it this summer it's not that I think far it's away, summer. I don't think. Yeah, yeah, it's not that far. I'm pretty stoked for that, actually. It could. It, it could. I mean, 
from what I understand, it's going to be totally, uh, even more so than the movies, kids, like kids programming, like, like Saturday morning cartoon level of, yeah. you know, which, which I could totally see being a success. I mean, kids need more you, stuff to watch. If you go down the Sonic rabbit hole, Sonic has gone from being like a game for like everybody because he was supposed to be the next Mario for Sega. Yeah, sure. And then he evolved into and then Sonic entire universe evolved into Edge like Lord. Shadow the Hedgehog <laughs> where he's like running around with guns and like the most edgiest uh, complexion ever. Um, and now, like, we're back at this place where Sonic is trying to be that family friendly uh, yeah. place again. Yeah. And that's where they're finding success is in that that category for sure. The Sonic movies they're, have been a big hit. Your comics, though, I, from what I understand, the Sonic like manga comics. I don't know which one it is. It is it's pretty dark, though, from from what I was told. <laughs> uh, from there what was, I, not told what I see. There was this like a whole big recent controversy, too, with um. Yuji Naka, the creator of, of Sonic and a bunch of other like uh, older Sonic team people. Apparently, a lot of them like hate each other and they were all like photoshopping each other out of it was Sonic's like 30th anniversary or 35th anniversary or something recently. So there's all these like celebrations going on and like behind the scene, like photos and stuff. And they were like all like at war, like photoshopping each other, like out of these like pictures of like of the team and making like really nasty comments about each other. And uh like Yuji Naka and some other guy like went to war over like a 30 year old like on Twitter about this like 30 year old feud because um, this one guy swore that it was Yuji Naka's fault that uh, the Sega CD flopped. And that was he was basically arguing that that was like the start of the downfall of Sega and like all this. And Yuji Naka was like to, was like denying it all, saying that like you just read some random thing. That's not even what happened. And like. The, it goes back to the dumbest story too it's like yuji 30 naka, years in the making war bro yeah like it was like yuji naka wouldn't allow the team making the new sonic game for sega cd to use the knights into dreams engine that was the rumor and because of that they didn't they didn't finish a game that was going to be like the sonic game for sega cd and that was the argument because that game didn't like come to fruition. It had end up getting canceled because they couldn't use this engine that the Sega CD had no like flagship title and it failed. And that started Sega's <laughs> spiral. Speaking of say it like consoles, has that Sega console like that weird wooden one come out yet? I remember they announced like years ago. Like, wooden yeah, one. Sega has like a whole new like home console now. Well, they've got the mini Genesis thing. Uh, they just no, announced no, another no. mini is, Genesis. This was like a real thing. Let me look this up real quick. Uh, Wooden? Sega. I mean, all Sega stuff's good for is firewood anyhow, so. <laughs> Mega mini Genesis. Sega two? Wooden no, console. No. I gotta go this on my phone. They, like, it looked like a retro-ass console. It actually looked pretty cool, but it's just like there's clearly no market. Is it really something. wood? Yeah, it's got like actual like finished wood on it. I googled Sega wood console and I got something told. <laughs> Never mind. Uh, this Sega Saturn thing? I see a wooden Sega Saturn. I wish you were in your phone right now so you could send it to me. They actually had one. I see Jamie, a wooden find the, Jamie, PS4 find the wooden, too. Find the wooden Sega console. Who? Jamie. Yeah, from Joe Rogan. Oh. Is it Jamie <laughs> or Jeremy? I can't remember. It's Jamie. Oh, okay. Um. All right. So speaking of consoles, though, let's make this let's make this transition. Uh, the world's first blockchain video game console was announced. I don't know, week and a half, two weeks ago. It's called the Polyum One. Promises to be the first uh Web three console. They announced no release date, no price, no games, and literally jacked the GameCube logo. <laughs> Just spun it around. Did you see this thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did. What was your? I know, I know your general thoughts on crypto and blockchain. So, man, they've got like a lot of nerve to really be like this sold on their own products. Like they are like defending it as if like they have done nothing wrong and that they are still not doing anything wrong. The part. And, go ahead. No, you go. You go. The part that always kills i'm always looking at like these like upstart projects because you know because one out of a thousand is gonna be like 
will actually like deliver right and i'm always trying to find like that one you know like whatever it may be whether it be a new indie game or whatever technology the thing that and the thing i always look at is like let me look at the people behind it like what's their experience because they may be under the new company but you know you might find some people who are like working for the company who are like significant you're like oh i know this guy he's done some good stuff and like i can put some they didn't announce any like not a single name like not a, not not even like a oh hey we have experience working with Nintendo you know under you know Nintendo and Activision and Atari or anything nothing this oh hey here's our here's our blockchain console uh, nothing else here's a render uh, it, I just know the tone and the response they would give you if you were like going like hey who is anybody from the team actually done anything so like in the in the gaming industry their exact response is we won't need that because we are reinventing the future. Like probably that's right. probably what they would say. Weren't they also like stealing like other games artwork and just throwing it like on their web page and storefront? For well, this, they they this had, also they didn't announce any games, but they definitely had like on their website like uh like screenshots of existing blockchain games. You could just play in like a web browser now. So I was like, is that all this thing is gonna be like like a like a like a streaming? box like basically Adobe flash streaming box yeah like because they didn't announce specs like if, if you're announcing a console unless you're an established you know if you're xbox if you're nintendo if you're sony you can announce your next console without being like this many frames this resolution the very first time you announce it you can be like here's our new console it's coming out in 2023 more time to come or more details to come you know if you're a new company you can't announce a console and be like oh here's a drawing of it and it looks like roku with a controller on it you know like <laughs> nothing else no price even if they showed one game like like that would have been fine like one here's 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 our flagship title it's coming in 2024 uh you know stay tuned they showed nothing they announced nothing other than you like don't have to, hey follow mayor, us crypto bros it. you're not seeing it mayor this is the future like you yeah. should already know and be caught up on what a crypto blockchain already is. You should know by now that whatever it is that we're doing, it's gonna work. Well, it's honestly able... like crypto, crypto seller, like crypto, whatever the hell they're called. They sound like umbrella employees at this point. <laughs> Let me go get my Google prototype scopes real quick. Now that we're talking about the the future. <laughs> uh, oh my god. Yeah. This uh, I I just. You know, I am somebody who like, like I said, like I do dabble in like crypto and blockchain projects and I'm always like looking for one that I'm like, oh, this one like look actually might be trustworthy. And like I saw this one and I was like, this thing is just like has red flag after red flag after red flag, like all around it. Just cannot by any means recommend it to anybody. I did a video about it and I almost felt bad. Do you ever have those times where you're like, retweeting something with a response that's negative or even anything like that and you're like am i giving this thing like a even though it's like negative attention i'm bringing this thing to more people's attention and maybe i shouldn't even be doing that because this thing is so bad you know like maybe i should just let so, it go die in a dark corner and not even talk about it i feel like we don't really see like the end result of this but like a good example is the island boys you know who those guys are no oh god um I have they're, I sense a bad bad discussion coming. They're I'm not talking about them too much, but they're like probably the worst rap duo oh, okay. ever to exist. <laughs> I thought it was gonna um, be some weird society like on an island. Uh, no, no, like, no, nothing, nothing that cool. Um, no, these guys are act actual definition of cringe. Like, you probably know who Takashi Six Nine is, though, right? Yeah, I'm aware of him. Imagine minion versions of him. Minion. Yeah. Like about, the minions, but versions of him. How about Ice JJ Fish? You're familiar with that one? I am very familiar with that. <laughs> Anyways, Island Boys are a good example of you don't really see what happens to these people whenever they like have a very controversial like appearance mm -hmm. and where they go after that. Like Island Boys got a lot of attention because of how poor their like their content was. <laughs> and on TikTok, literally their their manager came out and said, Oh, they owe me like over 150,000 grand. <laughs> uh because like they're like they're not doing good he goes they're getting a lot of social media attention but yeah. like they're being booed off of stages <laughs> they're constantly losing money and just throwing it away on dumb stuff like the only content of the only revenue that they pull in for actual content only content they pull in for revenue is like tiktoks and yeah. that's 
literally them just being memed on the whole time. That's oh, why they make money off of that. I think of situations like the, mo- the whole Morbius or- ordeal, right? Where like Morbius came out, it totally bombed, it totally sucked. Horrible movie from the get go. Everybody knew it was going to be horrible. Well, I knew it was going to be horrible. Jared Leto, Leto, however you say his name. You know, more and more stories came out about him being like a creep on set and doing like really weird stuff to his it was co-stars and the cat uh what about a crew? Like I said, like the crew was literally uncomfortable around this guy. So the movie comes out, totally flops, and then like the memes start. And then they like brought back the movie, and like the movie started to get popularized, and like like all the the like the director and Jared Leto and the studio were all jumping in on it and like getting the movie more attention. I'm like this movie is going to get a sequel because people are making fun of it, but it's getting so many impressions and, and people like, I'm like, just let it die. They're like, don't touch it. You know, like just that's, let it go. That's what I see. How like Microsoft is looking at halo right now. <laughs> is that, that way like they, they only look at the data and not the actual like feedback, which is a weird thing to say because 10 years ago, Microsoft was the complete opposite where they were actually listening to people's feedback and not looking at the numbers. Mm -hmm. Like Windows 8 was still widely adopted despite how bad it was vocally to people. Mm -hmm. And then they were like, okay, let's fix that. Same thing with Xbox One, let's fix that. Although the data for that was still successful. It still outsold the Xbox 360 at the time. Mm -hmm. And now Microsoft has flip-flopped that around and they're like, oh, well, I mean, like we've got a lot of people watching this show on Paramount. Like it's clearly a success because people are watching it. I feel like not team, because we gave away like entire millions of Xbox Game Pass. Perks I feel like three that months. is the name of the game with with TV and Hollywood right now, though, because I mean, a lot of what all these studios and services are doing is they're just they're tapping into these fandoms. They're licensing like these already existing, you know, IP. Netflix is the either, I guess how you look at it best or worst at this where they, they take something because they know it has an audience. And they churn something out that's like, you know, six out of 10 at best, but like Resident Evil, you know, uh, well, it's, you know, it's not bad. You know, it's got some redeemable qualities. They don't need to go all out because they know they're going to get enough impressions and enough views and enough subscribers out of just putting out like that, setting the bar right there, like Mm -hmm. six out of 10. And that's unfortunately what we see a lot, especially with, with TV and movies. And that brings up the question, like, what keeps these these companies afloat? And it's just data, like raw, pure yeah, raw impressions data. Impressions and, and subs. And I, I'm going to kind of briefly segue away from this um, just a bit. I know you're not going to like it, but like, you know, we talked a little tiny bit about the Elon Musk thing. We don't need to get into it. Yeah. But I think that whether you like Elon or Musk, he brings up a good point of what is an actual viable impression. What is a viable oh, yeah. person who's engaging with your content? Yeah. And, you know, whether we'll see what the, what the what the trial looks like and like by the end of the year, I don't know mm-hmm. what the hell that's going to happen. Right. Of what this outcome really is. But mm-hmm. it's it's a good point to point out, like you've got fake people engaging with your content. Is this actually well, real information that you could utilize to change the course of your product? Or are you just going to ignore that so that we could keep creating these fake identities of numbers and of impressions, good impressions, positive impressions, just to say we could keep doing this, keep going. Well, you you see that. I, I don't want to say too many names, I guess, but you, you, you see that with some of these websites, um, especially in the content creation space where, again, I, I'm trying to be, I'm trying not to call too many people out because I, I, I have accounts on some of these websites and I have benefited from it. But, um, for example, I've posted videos on, on websites before that, that are, t- they're telling me I'm getting tens of thousands of views, 15,000 views, 50,000 views, like per video, like, like easy, like, like nothing. Mm-hmm. Um, and th- that, that question comes up and like, they're compensating me for these, for these views, you know, like, so, so it's not like there's not like, it's just like some random figure, but it's like, how in the world like, like you, okay, I've got 50,000 views on this video and I've got two comments. So it, it begs that question, like, what is an actual impression? Because if 50,000 people actually sat there and watched that video, I'm pretty sure more than two of them would have something to say, right? Like, that, that's not, I don't take, there's something going wrong there. There's like, there's not actually 50,000 people watching that video. There's no way. And have you noticed that there's like TikToks out there that will have 
thousands and millions, hundreds of thousands, I mean, of like views and also even likes, but there's only like two comments on them. Yeah, uh, TikTok's a weird platform, I think, in general for that China. because it's all China. Well, <laughs> um, but it, it's all content that's just fed to you. So you don't you don't even have to engage it. Like it's just like if it came across your screen, it got a view. Even if you you know what I'm saying? It oh, okay. TikTok's, so that's TikTok's a weird okay. one. Like um where it's like a YouTube video, you probably you like you actually clicked that video. I wanted to watch mm -hmm. that video. You know what I mean? Yeah, okay. Um, I get what you mean now. I didn't know it worked like that. I actually don't know any of like the I don't understand the TikTok algorithm. It's really good though. And it knows how to put me in, in the algorithm of what I like. Oh, it totally very, works. Very yeah. well. Yeah. It totally works. YouTube, figure it out, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I think YouTube's pretty good at it too, but it I feel like it's all short term. Like like it's like whatever you searched for five minutes ago is what it's gonna feed you for like a week. You know what I mean? And then that's just it, it can't like I don't think it does a good job of uh figuring out your like permanent interests it's more like short term and then just like if i google I if i if i search world of warcraft it's gonna until i search something else it's just gonna keep feeding me world of warcraft videos like something that spotify does that really annoys me is that they constantly try to sell me on like content like on an artist i would never have ever like looked at yeah because i yeah. know i know what i look at i know what i want i know what i listen to and Spotify yeah. will like throw some recommendations in like my my daily stuff, my daily mix and stuff like that. And it's usually the same stuff over and over. I it's know we've stuff. debated the Apple thing before. Have I told you about my Apple Music curse that I have? No, what? Dude, it drives me nuts. It's <laughs> it's the worst part of my morning every day. So I use Spotify, right? That's my go-to music service. Every day when I get in my car and I cannot find a way to stop this, and maybe you know how. Oh, a friend of mine Apple says, Music comes out first. And not only is it Apple Music, that's, I, I don't have a problem with Apple Music as a service. My problem is, and now I do, now I, because of this issue, I have a problem with it. Every day, it either plays, and I don't know why, either U2, who I hate and can't stand and would never listen to, or, or Watch the Throne, the Jay-Z and Kanye West album, which at one time, when it first came out, I liked. I have now heard it so much because Apple Music starts playing it, whether I want to hear it or not, that I can't stand it. And I just I, I wish there was some way for me to to stop it from doing this because I can't find it. Alone. I know that's you what my friends alone. say, that it's that it you can't to, fix it. It happens to Potatoes car all the time, too. Every time I boot up my phone on Wi-Fi uh, for the first time, like I can actually do it once. And then make sure you, what you have to do is make sure Spotify has something playing first before you get it connected before your phone connects to the Bluetooth. It will go straight to Spotify. I okay. guarantee it. I'm gonna try um, that. But uh, whenever you don't do that, it'll go straight to Apple Music. And then, like for me, I have Bring it, Me the Horizon. Ouch! And it just goes. If it generated something that like I didn't mind, it wouldn't wouldn't be a problem. But no matter what, it's it's goddamn you two, and it's Watch the Throne. And I, I really have to wonder. If it's just like if there's some deal between Apple Music and and those two artists that, hey, if if if, you know, if this person has never like searched for a song on Apple Music, this is what you're going to feed them. We're going to pay you to, to listen to freaking you, too. I think what Ugh. you need to do is just remove it entirely from your iTunes library. When that happened, it created so much controversy. They allowed people to just straight up delete it from their iTunes. It's like the first thing I did. Yeah, whenever they did that to me. I, I don't know how YouTube was in there. I've never ever once in my life searched YouTube on any platform. Oh, well, you remember? Anyway. Like, yeah, they just straight up gave everybody a free YouTube album. Ugh. That was like forever. ago. I will hate them forever for this. No, it's super annoying. It is super annoying. I'm just like, oh, God. Frick. All right, let's get back on track. <laughs> so, Midnight Society. I, I want to hear your take on this. I don't Dr. know anything. Okay, so I'll tell you. You tell me what okay, you think. Okay, okay, okay. So, Dr. Disrespect's studio. And I, I have to be very careful about the way I say this because I feel like a lot of people hear that and they're like, oh, Dr. Disrespect's studio. But if you look at the people who've been hired there, it's like Call of Duty veterans, it's Halo veterans, it's Gears of War veterans. There's significant talent that has been hired there. So let's get that out of the way. Um, and yes, Doc is there. And yes, Doc has actual game development experience. He worked on Call of Duty Advanced Warfare before he was the Doc. 
Uh, they announced the genre of their game, first of all. So it's a vertical extraction shooter. So think Escape from Tarkov, but with like, like a cyberpunk setting, like skyscrapers, like lots of verticality to it. Mm-hmm. But with larger player counts, they say they want like Battle Royale style um, player counts, whereas Tarkov or the cycle, you know, maybe they have like 16, 20 players like per map at a time. They're thinking like between 60 and 150. So much larger, more PvP, so on. Yeah. Um, it was also confirmed for console, PC and console, which I was not expecting mm. at all. Uh, a lot of people don't like the NFT integration that it has because if you became a founder for this game, you received an NFT. Full disclosure, I am one of those people. Um, and they also announced that starting in two weeks, they're going to release a playable build every six weeks for the owners of these these NFTs. Every six weeks, you're going to be have a new, they call them snapshots, something to test. It might be just, hey, one gun, shoot it, tell us what you think about it. It might be one tiny little playable space. It could be anything, right? It, but they say they're releasing playable builds every six weeks, and people are also taking issue with that and saying that your your paid your paid beta testers you paid to test their game for them and blah 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 everything i've heard from the general internet about this game except for people who are fans of doc and the studio it has just been total tear it apart and i i wonder what you think are, i think the people who are saying that actually don't play multiplayer games at all to begin with <laughs> yeah like we we've already established by literally since overwatch came out and after that followed with PUBG to every other game that is currently popular on the market is that we have been beta testing these games oh, for yeah. years and we will continue to beta test them for years oh yeah um and like at that point it's just like nobody cares anymore like nobody cares that we beta test games anymore so long as yeah. the beta test game itself is just got you something got, has something worth coming back to right and What's interesting is that Valorant always remains the outlier here because the game released pretty well, actually. Yeah. And it only has two modes, like two, like one main mode. They launched will with keep three playing. maps, right? If I remember correctly. Yeah, they've lost. A to- they've launched a total of three maps. It was uh, Bind, and then it was Fracture, and now it is Pearl. And it's only been like, Icebox more than is a in year. There too. Uh, Icebox was technically new, but yeah. it, it was part of the roadmap already and in terms not of like liked. actual new. Yeah, all I mean, Icebox is controversial. I personally like Icebox. I don't mind Icebox. It's not my favorite, but I don't mind I, it. I know like pros don't like playing Icebox. You don't see it. I don't yeah. think you see it in any pro league stuff. It does have oh, some awkward do. elements to it, but I don't mind it. They've made some pretty good changes to it that I like actually. Um, but I mean, like, yeah, there's peop- these these are the Gary modders who are still playing like, you know, <laughs> NSF mods. Too. Yeah, Team Fortress 2, NSFW mods of Skyrim and stuff like that. Like, there's a, like, this Discord that I'm in, there's this guy who's just, like, absolutely, he's from the Philippines. It's also funny, because he's got, like, a very different perspective based off culture and as mm-hmm. well as region. But he, like, loathes, like, he's the type of person that would hate Midnight Society. Yeah. He would hate it so much. And, like, at the same time, he doesn't play any other social experience. Yeah. And also, like, this is probably like the most unique, if not, I think the most interesting development of a game we've seen in a very long time. Thank you for saying that. <laughs> like nobody else, like no one else is doing it. Like, what, first of all, the NFTs aren't fucking hurting anybody, man. Like, come they've on. made it clear from the get go that, like, because the game has NFTs in it, does not mean you need to engage with the NFTs. Our goal is yeah. to make this game a good game and then yeah. have NFTs, which is what I've said all along that. A lot of these blockchain games are they're leading with the fact that hey we're a blockchain game that's like that comes first and then it's like you see the actual game and it's like you know it looks like no disrespect to crunker yeah. but like crunker you know like like we made this game in like two weeks i love crunker don't get me wrong but you get what i'm saying there's like little yeah. minimal effort on the video game maximum effort on the blockchain and i think they're doing it the other way around they're developing a triple a game with nft integration which is the way to do it in my opinion um no i I absolutely agree and what's also kind of like frustrating is that 
people really aren't looking at how authentic the the development experience is going with nfts like mm -hmm. if you're not an nft owner like you shouldn't care like, yeah. if you're not invested into the game why do you care where this game's development yeah. goes you have shown that you have no interest and that's totally fine the game is still continuing without you right and also the game uh itself when it launches still will not require you to do that and also doc on his stream does not talk about nfts doc is no. probably doc probably like i'm pretty sure K like caleb beam is what his name is or something like that i'm pretty sure he guy, has his investments guy beam, guy yeah. beam. yeah i don't know where i got fucking caleb from guy i'm pretty sure he's got his own investments right the, oh the dude's, dude's got millions smart. yeah yeah he's got millions he's got a a, a 1999 uh, lamborghini in his garage <laughs> lamborghini um, diablo uh, but like he doesn't talk about this like he doesn't make it a point he's not giving you the same he's not dribble. jamming he's, it down your throat yeah he's not giving you the same drivel that most of these crypto like yeah. things are trying to do like he's going to he will be the only successful person in the market with his team actually doing this and people are gonna I mean, feel a burn and feel stupid that, at the end that's of the what i've said out. all along is that everybody and gamers in particular are gonna hate on nfts forever and then somebody sometime whether it's this project or another one somebody will absolutely nail the nft or blockchain integration in a way that nobody has and then it's going to be it's like going to revolutionize the, and i'm not saying every game is going to go that way but all of a sudden everybody's gonna be like oh, oh that's what it is like i can i can play the game for six months and then sell my skins and get my money back like that's sweet like all of a sudden every because all but what it's going to take is a good game first a game that you mm -hmm. want to play like Imagine if, um, you know, one of my viewers always brings up, like, imagine if you could, like, sell your Fortnite skins because, like, you don't like that one anymore and, like, a newer one comes out. Like, wouldn't that be amazing? Because I've spent, like, $3,000 on these skins for my kid. God like, knows I've done that with Valorant. I'm not even playing yeah, the damn game. Yeah, people have been selling their game accounts or their CSGO skins or whatever for ages. And it's, like, now that you're going to have, like, a direct way to do it, people are throwing a fit. And... The other thing that makes me laugh is, uh, you know, gamers in general constantly rail that. And I'm not even saying that it's wrong, but constantly rag on developers for not taking feedback and not being in touch with the community and, uh, you know, not like not testing things enough. And it's like, so here's a developer that's literally going to release like everything bit by bit to take the feedback from the community to let you use it and then listen to what you think and then. You know, like one thing at a time. Like this is literally mm -hmm. the most granular testing with a uh, public gaming community that I have ever heard of, and they're all complaining about it. And it's like, what, what, what do you want? Do you want a finished game and to never have even like been able to speak about it, or do you want to actually be involved in the development of the game? Because if you want to be involved, this is what it looks like. It's well, you. There's, there's multiple ways you could still take community feedback i mean sure. star citizen is probably like the best case example of you know a crowdfunded game that is yeah. constantly being redeveloped based mm -hmm. upon that community feedback but also star citizen is a very niche as hell game and yeah. not everybody cares for a star exploration simulator again you know we've With got mark hamill yeah we've got all we've already got those things yeah. right like star citizen i think is was ahead of its time but also behind in the tech and that's mm -hmm. obvious which is why it's in its crowdfunding stages yeah so now it's just like that's your point of like, hey, what can we do? What's most important? Is it feedback and development or is it innovation in the in the industry? Mm -hmm. And that's, that's the other thing, too. It's like people are really upset about they're saying like, oh, uh, you know, you're you're paying to test this game and you're you're being ripped off. It's like, do you guys not and not everybody has to do this. It's obviously a choice. But how many games have, uh, you know, we vote we given money to via Kickstarter or Patreon or whatever to literally fund the development for it. It's the exact same thing, except in Midnight Society case, they're giving you back an NFT and the ability to test the game. It's the exact same thing. It's paying to fund a game and then getting perks in return. And, and you people can really say that for any product pre-ordering same thing. You're pre-funding the game and then you're going to get the product in return. Like that's if, 
If you invest in an ecosystem of hardware, like a Samsung phone, like an iPhone, and you keep buying the new versions of it, you are mm -hmm. funding the research and the yes. development to continue to further align the, the next yeah. product. Sure, you're spending a significant amount of different like value on there, but like it's the same fucking thing, dude. Like you're, yeah. we're we're all in the pyramid scheme. That's what people don't want. They think that <laughs> they just don't want to be in a pyramid scheme. They want scheme everything anymore. for free is what they want. They want everything for free and they don't want to be in a pyramid scheme. And they want it to be Thank perfect. God it's not a Ponzi. Thank God it's not a Ponzi scheme. You know, it, it could be worse than a pyramid scheme. You like need to, you need is. to, and I, I gotta say this, and I know nobody's gonna listen to this, but if if I tweeted this video out, the Hunt Showdown team released a, it's a nine minute video about a week ago, explaining upcoming monetization changes to their game, and you don't see developers usually be this transparent about it. They map out perfectly why they are doing what they're doing, like why are they adding these new paid elements to the game, and it's like. For some people, it might be like, oh, yeah, no, no, duh, this makes total sense. But I feel like 98% of gamers don't understand this. You know, they, they explain, like, we released our game three to four years ago, and it was a paid game. Eventually, the sales for this game, as successful as it has been, dry up. Like, we've tapped the market. Nobody else is buying this game. So where are we going to get money to continue funding the development of this game? That's our choice. It's move on and just leave it as is, which is what would happen in... 2007 or 2008 you know like you you run out eventually your sales slow down and you move on um or we can add you know these few things for people to buy in the game and then we can continue the development of the game and they they walk through exactly like what they are using why they are add, adding the things that they're adding and it's just like I, I wish more people would like listen to that and be like oh yeah like now I see, like, because I'm, I'm begging for content for my game, but I didn't realize that that content actually cost these developers money. That's wild. Like, I feel like nobody understands. I don't, you, people are, are obviously so ignorant of, like, what goes behind the scenes of tech. Like, at the end of the day, video mm -hmm. games should literally, quite literally not exist. And not and cost anything. And the fact anything. that they do. Yeah. And the fact that they do at a very reasonable price of pretty much free if you have game pass this is not a marketing trope by the way like literally free <laughs> then like what why do we like feel so entitled i hate human beings sometimes yeah like, we just feel so entitled uh, it to is entitlement to too everybody and is such a karen this i got into a, a war with this dude on twitter a few weeks ago and he was just ragging on like every single game like nonstop, and i'm like do you even like are you sure you like video games because you don't seem to be enjoying them you know and he's like he started coming at me so hard he's like you're such an idiot like i love video games and i'm like you have nothing good to say like are you sure like this is what you like want to be doing like do you enjoy them and he, he was just so love mad being in the echo chamber though like just oh, yeah. hearing not just your voice come back at you just someone on the internet yeah. to say like oh yeah i agree with you I get it. Like, it feels great to know someone out there oh, understands yeah. what you think. It's easy. But, like, don't it's be a gratifying. dick. <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. Um, so this might be a quick discussion. I want to get the last blockchain topic out of the way because we have a well whole wealth of them this week. Do you know who Tomonobu Itagaki is? Who's To? Okay. <laughs> okay, that's it. No. Uh, dead or Alive. You know Dead or Alive, oh, right? Oh, okay. I know Dead or Alive. I know, you, I, yeah, I know Dead or Alive. <laughs> uh, the fighting series, not the volleyball series, to be oh. clear. Um, yeah, and I you mean, know you know the Ninja Gaiden reboot for uh, Xbox, right? OG Xbox? Mm-hmm. Okay. So the guy who directed both of those things, the Dead or Alive series and the Ninja Gaiden reboot. His name is Tomonobu Itagaki. And he fell from grace about 15 years ago. <laughs> it's been mostly missing ever since. Uh, he got like ran, run out of Team Ninja at Tecmo. I think there was some... This was before. Recently? No, like at least oh. 10 years ago. Okay. Uh, like workplace toxicity stuff. And supposedly, I don't... Obviously, I have no knowledge of what actually went down. But he's back. He's got a new studio. Legendary game designer, in my opinion. Even though I'm not a big fan of better live by any means so he's back which was pretty exciting to me he also only is ever seen wearing leather jackets and sunglasses which wins him points and i remember book. seeing him pop up on like e3 yeah. shows <laughs> yeah 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 uh and his game is a blockchain mmo and i i just this one stings me a little bit because this is one of those ones where i am not so uh 
confident <laughs> that maybe a this is a cash in. Just a different flavor of your bluebell ice cream. Yeah. Well, it's, that's unfortunate to hear. Yeah. I just had, we, I had to mention it. We, we can only give him the benefit of the doubt that he's going to let us do some more dead or alive volleyball game. Crypto. Are they still going changes. with that series? The volleyball I series? So. No. <laughs> I remember one time going to GameStop trying to like buy that because trade ins, and the guy was like, Can I have your ID? And I was like 13. <laughs> I'm surprised I was, like, it was rated M. Yeah, I know. I was like, Dude, boobs never killed anybody. <laughs> that's, that's the quote of the episode. All right, we got two spicy Xbox topics to, uh, to move, close us out with the news and rumors this week. So, the first one is Platinum Games, according to good sources has uh, approached Xbox and asked them to fund and publish their next game. And bear in mind, uh, Platinum has made uh, a plethora of really great games, including uh, Bayonetta, but they're near, near uh, and they were Clover Studio before that. So they made Okami, uh, they're, they're a legendary studio, Vanquish. Metal uh, Gear Rising. Yes, they, they're uh, beautiful Joe. Um, Tons of good fantastic, games. Fantastic studio. Yes. Uh, they were also responsible for, what was it? What the heck was it called? Scalebound. Scalebound. The canceled Xbox project, which reportedly. The one, the one that started it all, yeah. honestly, <laughs> with the no games trend. Like, yes. I'll never let it down. Uh, which reportedly uh, Platinum took the budget for from Microsoft and used it on other games. That was the they rumor. Used, they used it on Nier. Yeah, uh, that was the rumor. But now they have approached Xbox and Phil Spencer again and said, please fund and publish our next game. And I wanted to I wanted to get your take on this because I know at your heart, you're an Xbox guy. So what do you well, think? Would you take sounds, this deal? I would take the deal. I mean, yeah. they've come pretty public to say that they've learned their lesson. We fucked up. <laughs> they know they know they fucked up. And like that was very, very clear whenever like years later after the scale bound cancellation. He came out and said, yeah, there were some interesting decisions made by the studio that I do regret. They like, have seemed cash poor. No matter how many good games they make, they have seemed cash poor for quite a long time. Mm -hmm. And I think, I mean, I personally, I don't think I saw me playing Scalebound as the game that I wanted to play. But mm -hmm. after, you know, experiencing things like Nier and finally trying out Metal Gear Rising, I'm like, oh, this is what the studio does. Yeah. I'm like, okay, there's a lot that could, that probably Scalebound could have done. Um, and I know that, like, there's, like, some friends of mine that were just, like, they're not really, they don't really care much about, like, console wars or anything like that, but they definitely preferred PlayStation because they liked those types of JRP mm -hmm. games. They loved the, the niche kind of yeah. jet set radio kind of experiences mm -hmm. that that game was going to offer. And um, they are like, dude, I wanted that game. They're like, I would have bought an Xbox for that immediately. And I was like, oh, it's pretty cool. Their last oh, game, their most recent game, uh, was published by Square Enix. And I believe it received legit 1.0 out of 10 reviews from people. And uh, it had a, a concurrent uh, player count of 14 on Steam, I think, like a week or two Ooh. after it launched. So Those are I, just people memeing. Well, it's one of those things where... I, Platinum to me, they're high risk, high high reward because there's obviously a major amount of talent at that studio. Wonderful 101 they made for the uh, that's that was Wii U, I think. Beautiful, beautiful Joe, yeah. Uh, well, well, yeah, and then they did um, what in my, in my opinion is the most underrated Wii game, Mad World, which was really, really, really good and one of my favorite Wii games. Um, they are like, yeah, they are an action genre, uh, God and and RPGs as well. Uh, but they've had some major failures as of late. And uh, I, I would take it well, too, I think, because, and I think Phil Spencer will too, because we know that Phil has been virtually uh, desperate looking to work with, to with Japanese studios. Yeah, yeah. And, and wins. So I'm curious if this is the game that uh, Hideki Kamiya announced like a year ago. Who's the guy who created Devil May Cry and Beautiful Joe mm -hmm. and Okami? I think it was called like Project P or something like that. And it looks to be a mech game or yeah, if it's something I, totally different. If it's another or something like that, we'll see. I'm like, I, I again, I, I personally wouldn't mind if they just brought back Scalebound. 
Yeah, I me think, either. I think that still had you know some. some I think if it, promise it if it came if they finished scale pound and it was good, that would generate so much goodwill after the right? disappointment that that was. If they took the risk on it and they finished it and it was like actually good, that would uh, yeah. I I don't think it's scale bound, but. <laughs> Well, we all know how Microsoft handles their shelved IPs. They don't. Yeah. <laughs> I heard the Phantom Dust guy coming back crawling again recently saying he wants to make a sequel. Uh, 25 the, years straight later. Straight out of the dust, huh? Yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> Babylon's Fall. Yeah, that was the name of that game. Uh, but I, I think I would take the deal, too. And I, I think I would do it. It's, it's worth the risk. I mean, if it fails, it fails. What's the worst that happens? Yeah, you put it on Game Pass. What more can you get, could you do to That's worsen true. your reputation? Good point. Good point. <laughs> okay, and now for the last one, and I, I think I know we, both of our opinions on this. An analyst came out the last five days or so and said that he believes that Microsoft's next move will be to buy Netflix. And this... This was hot off the heels of Netflix chose Microsoft as their partner for the ad supported version of Netflix that they're working on. I think that's what spawned this rumor. And I, I want to hear your your take on it. <laughs> the analyst is a crackhead. I'll I'll give him a, a pipe to smoke it. Smoke his crack out of. I got to look. This I up. think I think he's just looking for impressions. I think people also are continuously to trying to just create the same type of bullcrap that they that nobody's asked for is just seeking clout, capitalizing this, it as best way you can. This Honestly, kind of, I wouldn't be surprised if Microsoft just paid somebody to make an article like that. <laughs> this kind of surprises me. Um, and it, it's very interesting. I just searched uh, Netflix market cap to see how much it would co- like just out of curiosity, how much it would cost. Uh, the current Netflix market cap is eighty two billion dollars, which kind of shocks me because active the activision blizzard deal was 80 billion dollars so microsoft has made deals in that range before yeah they can definitely do it honestly microsoft could quite literally buy the world they're that's not true. allowed to. that's true they could buy anybody they can quite literally buy people which i think they do they don't buy the right ones sometimes though i mean we're seeing that with poor development decisions especially across other divisions of microsoft but that's just that's just me being petty I, I'm with you. I mean, could I see Netflix and Microsoft furthering their relationship? Absolutely. Could I see them? Could I see Net- Microsoft even investing in Netflix? I could see that too. I mean, yeah. why why not? Yeah. Um, buy them outright. I, I have heard that ne- that Netflix is looking for an exit. That they're looking for somebody like Disney. You know, so, some one of those major players: Apple, mm-hmm. Facebook, Google, whoever. To to buy them because they've shown some weakness over the last two, three years. And I, I think they're starting to feel weak in the knees and look for gold, a the golden new, parachute. They, they're their, uh, they killed the hero. They thought they would become, which was blockbuster. They're the next blockbuster now. <laughs> what's the, what's the, the Batman version. quote? The, he, the, he, was Vengeance. it the hero that we need? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> The, the hero that we need, but not the one we deserve, or whatever. Yeah, from Dark Knight. Yeah, it's it's the I reverse. Know. I hope it's the hero that we deserve, but not the one we need. I think it's possible for something like Netflix to just hopefully dissolve and die out, so that way the next target can be Hulu, and that so that way we can all focus on Hulu's trash content, which Dude, is Hulu's been trash since day one. Worse. It, it, I will give it in the last couple of years; it has improved over what it was. But for years, I questioned why anybody subscribed to that. They service. have zero good original content. It's like so laughable. Like yeah. we only we give Netflix a lot of shit because they have good stuff. They have a track record. Nobody can argue that they don't have out. content. Netflix. Yeah. And there's definitely I mean, Stranger Things alone. I mean, you know. I mean, at this point, it's about who can get the contract first now at this point and who can more or less just sustain the production of that and market it later on. That's literally, that's literally what the streaming wars was about with yeah. South, with South Park. Actually. I don't know if you saw that, no. um, but it's about who can do it fastest and who could do it best. And that's yeah. literally all it is. At it's this about point. a Hulu, steady stream of content. 
Hulu is the CW of streaming. That's that's that might be giving them too much credit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. CW so, has arrow at least. Jada and I are both no to that one. Uh, so what's coming out soon or has arrived in you know the last we two weeks? We haven't really even talked about this also in our DMs, and I feel like it's something that we can kind of kind of get into. God of War Ragnarok has a release date. Yeah, it does. And uh, it was announced through a very, very short and simple Twitter Awkward post. tweet that took like two months for some reason because... It was leaked for months that like the release date was going to come and then it got delayed and then it got delayed again and then it got delayed again and it got delayed again. And then when they finally announced it, it was a, a tweet with the God of War logo. Yeah. And- <laughs> I mean, they, they actually gave us at least some cinematic to work with. They actually just released some more content today regarding the game. But man, it's just the, they, they keep hammering our point in like the nail of our point that is what the frig is going Sony's on with like being the marketing so at Sony? Awkward. Yes. Like Xbox actually surprisingly took a very similar approach with E3 this year, E3. But I think that's for very different reasons. I want to give them the benefit of the doubt that Microsoft was just weird because they want to play the long game with all of they the other still content carried events the coming show. Up. I mean they still carry the show, yeah. They still put together the best show of anybody. But I mean Literally, at this point, Nintendo Direct's mini events mm-hmm. are doing way better than what PlayStation, whatever the hell PlayStation's doing. They're not doing it. I was I like, mean, cool. I know what to take on my day for holiday what the, now. What's it called? Something of state of play. And they just yeah. show, like, I, I feel like all those state of plays are, is like, they just take some money from, like, publishers to, like, show a few games that probably nobody would even care about if they weren't on these shows. And... It's just so awkward. They had a state of play like a month ago, and instead of putting God of War front and center on it, they're like, oh, here's a tweet with God of War's uh, yeah. release date. The state of play was literally their answer to their E3. That's all we got that month, and it was mid as hell. Like, it was nothing... like Horizon VR, I think, was like their, their yeah. headliner. I mean, I, I think that they probably announced more cool things that are coming out this year, like Stray is coming out this year, which is oh, actually Jesus. I'm pretty Here stoked for it. I'm looking forward to playing it. I'm not <laughs> buying that game. Somebody was just like, oh, I'm buying the game. I know what my value is in the dollar. I'm like, dude, that is a one and done game. Put that bitch <laughs> oh, for sure. on PS Plus. Put it on PS Now yeah. immediately. And they are actually, they're putting it on PS Plus. So they do just... a good, they, I, I will say Sony does a good job with that program. They put some good games in there. They do. Like uh, Rocket League was a, was a PS Plus exclusive game. I think they just had a, oh God. They had a bunch of, I mean, they had Fall Guys on there, I think, like, at, yep. like, at they had launch. Fall Guys. Fall um, Guys was a launch game. They've, they've had a bunch of really uh, good good picks there. But man, um, I was like, I was really excited. I was like, all right, I'm playing God of War this year. Hell I'm, yeah. I'm really, bear in mind, God of War is one of my favorite action adventure games of the past five years. Maybe uh, non first person, maybe my favorite. But I'm in a camp where I'm looking at Ragnarok and I'm not. And I'm not saying it's not going to be a good game, but I'm not excited for it. And, and I think it's just because I played the first one. I loved it. And what I've seen of this one, it just looks like a retread in many ways. And I, I don't know. Mm. And, and, and that, I, someone's that, been looking at the DLC comments. That might be because they haven't shown us enough of the game. Like they, they and, and that plays into what we're talking about. It's like, we haven't seen all that much. Like, I mean, the first game is incredible. Like, I'm not kidding you. Like, I, I would give that game, like, that's one of those legit, this is a 10.0 masterpiece. And like, it, it is I would, someone, I would still either. critique parts of it, but I would say, like, literally, like, this is a, a masterpiece of a video game. But for some reason, the sequel is just not sparking much, much hype from me. I'm in a, um, I'm in a marketing group. It's mainly like a lot of students, but we, it's a lot of different people from all over the industry people from Intel, people from Asus, people from PlayStation also mm-hmm. uh, that are all in there. And we all just kind of like share ideas. We collaborate and we, we do have like conversational talks mm-hmm. about like, Hey, what's going on in the industry? Like, um, like when Nutter Butter said, uh, will you let me nut in you basically? Uh, um, I, know. <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about, but okay. I'll, I'll have to share it with you. It's actually a <laughs> funny tweet, but it's another, it's another one of those. Oh, that's a brand moment. Yeah. Um, like when Wendy's does their brand moments. But um, no, I asked the question. I'm like, hey, 
God of War was like dropped today, like for the announcement, like if that's what you want to call it. Who's can someone like break down what the hell happened? Because like this game has had very little marketing effort, and unfortunately, I didn't really see any like a lot of people jump into it. I'm bringing this a lot up right now, and that's Maybe what because I'm nobody wants to talk about it. But one person was just like, "Well, the first game was such a critical success. It's just." why like it makes sense that they don't need to dive into like marketing to to sell the game that everyone is below well, franchise sure. it's just like sure but like halo 3 what it has Gears a of war 3 it has a bit sure it has a built-in you know playstation fans uh, are gonna are gonna buy it no matter what to a certain extent but at the same time this should be I mean, it's the sequel to one of the best in my opinion, like, you know, next generation action adventure games of all time. It should absolutely be at the top of everybody's hype list. Like, no well, doubt in my mind. And you'd never hear anybody talking about it. Like, other than people getting pissed off that the release date got delayed, like, literally like, eight times. And then they started threatening developers and it became this huge, like, actual problem uh, for the studio. All because Sony of- couldn't put together a tweet, apparently. Like, like how? <laughs> come on, guys. Like, what's going on? Like I'm pretty like I'm pretty sure this is a similar thing that happened to The Last of Us. The Last of Us actually got a marketing campaign. And yeah. you know, I'll say it pretty loud and clear right now. I think Last of Us in terms of a market is way more approachable and sought after than God of War. I'm not mm-hmm. saying God of War doesn't have an audience, but mm-hmm. in comparison, I think more the people know about Last of Us than yeah. God of War. Yeah. So, but even like with The Last of Us, there was very, very confusing marketing approach to that game mm-hmm. also. Mm-hmm. Like, we are, the announcement trailer for it, hype. Like, there's, yeah. a, there's a grown LA playing Joel's yeah. guitar, and they're like, ooh, I'm getting goosebumps. And then he walks into the room moment. at the very end there. Like, yeah. Was, yeah. And then we were all like, hell freaking yes, here we go. And then, like, they gave us more after that, like, I think like a year or two later, and it was confusing. And mm-hmm. then, then the leaks happened. And then, like, more marketing happened. Like, what the hell is this game about? I think at one point they showed some really weird trailer that was, like, Ellie's mom or something like that. No, no, no. It was some woman who got executed or something. Yeah, it was a woman who got executed, and it was also a flashback memory of within that happened whenever Ellie was making out with her girlfriend. I don't care about that. Dude, I have... uh, uh, (laughs) uh misophonia misophonia is whenever you it's whenever you hear triggering noises that your your cortisol and your blood just (laughs) freaking boils dude hearing them them lips smack like they're on barbecue ribs bro like they're like sucking on like a flat wing you know what the wing stop dude i was like i needed to punch a hole i needed i needed to change my like my id and my birth certificate to kyle because <laughs> i was like juiced up on monster ready to see some last of us and i wanted to punch a hole in the wall so i bad. remember that very show shown that was at an e3 one year and so whatever they did the one in that sony decided we're only going to show four games which was bizarre at the time it was like spider-man days gone the last of us and i can't remember the fourth one at the time but um, you know, Days Gone flopped. Obviously, Spider Man was a hit from day one. Yeah. And then The Last yeah. of Us. It, but that whole show, I remember watching that, and that was the first moment where I was like, something's going weird at Sony because they had for like eight minutes, they had like the guy who like, uh, did like The Last of Us soundtrack. Gustavo. Yeah. Do this live performance of like a song from the Last of Us Two soundtrack, and I don't want to take away. I love the the music of the Last of Us series. I think it's great. The dude's a musical genius. He deserves all the accolades. He's awesome. But the way they did that, like on the E3 stage, having the guy sit there and play this, like like in a video game, like that music is like amazing and atmospheric. Live on a stage during a video game, con- I was like, they're high on their own supply. Like something is seriously wrong there that they think that this is yeah. like. Like they're headed in a weird direction, and they've only like proved that to me since that point. Since that same E3, I know exactly which one you're talking about. They did it in that tent. It was one of those E3s where you had to be there. Yeah. And like it, like what they did was basically show us a very miniature version of Coachella and a very niche version. Then, like, weird. The, yes. The, the closest stage possible when you walk into Coachella. That's what. That Without was. music, that would make you like yeah like party and like excited it was more like oh this is what this is the music that i listen to when people are like 
uh, tragically getting slaughtered. Like <laughs> I, I also think that this was during the time whenever um, Jim Ryan took over. You know, I and think that E three was Sean Layden's last one. last one. Yeah, right? so he he may have been maybe a little bit selfish with himself or, or that. You know, or He's like oh, I want to make this one cool. I want to see something cool. But I don't Later, think guys. they've come to E three since then. I think that was their like last one. I think it was. Been well, we hit out COVID since, after that. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but they, they but, could have been there this year, and they didn't. Yeah, that's true. Well, couldn't well, have been there, but they could have done something. Well, I, ever since then, like the Sony marketing, we've said it like a couple of times now. It's just been so drastically bad. Yeah. And like we know that they're capable of doing some really cool stuff because God, the E3 that they had prior to that last year where they announced God of War. Their E3s used to be bangers. Dude, when did they announce God of War and the Resident Evil remake on the same stage? Or Resident Evil 7 Biohazard on the same yeah. like E3? That was like they, oh my god. They my used to alone. they used to like work the crowd so well at their E3s. And they used to like rub things in Xbox's face too. Like like uh, I remember like the Destiny announcements on their stage were huge. Uh, you know, Gran Turismo used to be the leader and like in the, the industry. live orchestras as well there, too. Um, that sounded great, actually. They, they at, during the, you know, like the PlayStation 4 era and they really E3 wise, they they stomped everybody and then they yeah. lost their swagger for whatever reason. You know, I, I wonder is... I, I've I mean, they've been arrogant, in my opinion. I punched my microphone. For a while, I really wonder if this uh, like mindset took over at Sony of like, and it will work to an extent for a certain period of time, but this mindset eventually fails of like, well, you know, our games are so amazing that they will just like, they will just carry themselves and we don't need to worry about that. Like that does work for a while until things start to go poorly eventually. And, and then it happens to everybody. Like nobody's infallible. Because, you know, Sony was really weird, too. Like, when uh, when Crossplay first started getting popular, they wanted nothing to do with it. They were trying to stymie it. They were the last console to get on board with that because they're like, well, we're the leader in the space. We don't need Crossplay. And it made them look like the bad guy because it's yeah. like, I can play with all my friends except for the ones on PlayStation. So weird. That was actually not too long ago. Also. I know. This was What's, quite literally less like than like three years ago, probably. Years ago. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was like Damn. Fortnite was out at the time, I think. Um, you know, and it's interesting because we see the paragon shifts of the power, the power scale mm -hmm. always tip and change. So yeah. like, you know, at the very beginning, Sony was always on top or it was mm -hmm. always Nintendo on top. Yeah. And then Sony took the stage and then Xbox took the stage. And then we hit that Xbox, like that point where the Internet finally found a place to shit post and create <laughs> really very bank memes, weird forum posts about this kind of stuff this is the birth of console wars is whenever like the 360 the ps3 started yeah. coming out because the internet has finally found a place in its in its world and then like xbox 360 clearly dominated yeah and then after that like even microsoft admits like we got arrogant and yeah. we just thought well, we could do this and i think and the same PS thing's gonna happen with sony now yeah, it's, it's it's a well oftentimes you see product. A company at their best after they have fallen right and they, they 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 accept that somebody has surpassed us and then they get scrappy and then and then they start to innovate which is what we've seen from xbox with okay we've screwed up what are we gonna do well we're gonna invent game pass and that's their best contribution at the moment to the entire industry so we'll see what happens yeah i we can at least agree that nintendo still sucks yep Polyam one's taken over anyway. <laughs> <sighs> All right. So things that have coming out, come coming out. Things that have coming out either soon or since our last show. We probably don't have time to discuss all these, but there's some really great ones in here. Uh, oh, what time are we ending? I, what? What time are we ending this? How much? Any time now. Oh, okay. We're, we're supposed to be cutting down to 60 to 90 minutes and we're at 90 right now. So. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Oh. Felt like I've been here for 30 minutes. <laughs> We're just that good. Uh, Stranger Things Volume 2 is out now. Uh, Cuphead, the delicious last course. Portal <laughs> came out on Switch. For the Gr Switch. Great job, Valve. Uh, Outriders, their new DLC. 
Arc I think it's pronounced Arcade Geddon came out. Thor Love and Thunder, uh Resident Evil Netflix, obviously, and uh The Gray Man and Nope come to theaters this week. And I want to see both of those. It's not uh, Sonic 3. I don't want to see it. <laughs> only movie. Um, um as far as stuff that's coming out, Stray comes out this week. As a matter of fact, it literally comes out on Thursday. I can't put that on the list. Yeah, it's gonna sell like three oh, million copies tomorrow. and I can't even speak of it. It's gonna come out tomorrow. I I'm stoked. I've I been can't do it. look, I've been I've been on my Mass Effect replay uh mode right now. I actually got every single Mass Effect 2 achievement in the legendary edition of Mass Effect. And then I booted up Mass Effect 3 and I'm like, oh my god, I actually hate this game. <laughs> and I, <laughs> I love like Mass, Mass Effect. Effect 3, but it's not a bad think, game, but do you think part god, of it though is burnout at this point because you're playing the entire trilogy back to back to back? No, not back to back. I played ME one as far as I could, and then I stopped playing Mass Effect after that. Okay. I just finished my Mass Effect two. I thought about it if it was burnout. Also, I I think Mass Effect three does really cool contributions to combat, but I don't think it really does anything interesting in terms of keeping you know what? engaged personally. You know what? I didn't like as uh... plus I'm on, plus I'm on an insanity run, so everything's mm. <laughs> a freaking meat shield, bro. Uh, Mass Effect Three multiplayer was surprisingly good back in the day. I loved it, and uh, they didn't put that in the in the remaster, which kind of let me down. Yeah, it also let me down that we still to this day have not got playable Valrus. Valrus is the best race in the entire franchise. Valrus. Yeah, those short little fat dudes who wear like the mask. Oh, okay. I don't, yeah, is I it in, I is it Mass Effect two or three that the one is like high, and Mass you can two. you can tell him to like you can save his life or tell him to charge in and he gets one shot by yeah. <laughs> by that one. By I couldn't or, I couldn't do that to him. I was like, oh, poor guy is just blitzed out of his mind right now. I, and I, I just I saved him. You, you kick him and he falls on his own and he's I, like he's like oh. I'm pretty sure that Shepard. If you tell him one of the options is Shepard says, like in in a way only Shepard can say, he's like, charge. It's like this like, very like corny delivered yeah. line, and like the followers yeah. just goes in and just gets demolished. I've I've seen the video. It's funny. Charge. Charge. <laughs> um Callisto Project comes out pretty soon too. The Callisto <laughs> Protocol. Sorry, not the project. Isn't it isn't it December? Yeah, that's soon. We're like literally half, soon? Like, more than halfway through the year. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. I try to do like one week or, or more on this uh, coming soon. But yeah, and Dead Space is like three, two or three weeks after that. Somebody asked me at the gym today. This is no joke. Uh, very casual gamer. Not even like a, we, we normally talk about like gym stuff and movies. He's like, hey, I wanted to ask you, did you play those Dead Zone games back in that day? I was like, Dead Zone? No, I never played that. And he's like, oh, they were kind of like Resident Evil, but like you're this guy who's like alone in space on a ship. And I'm like, Dead Space? And he's like, oh, yeah. He's like, those games were amazing. And I was like, yeah, you're right. Like, it, just, it happened so randomly. It was like such a natural, organic conversation. It's like, what made you bring up Dead Space up to me at the gym, like out of the blue on a Monday? You know, just, I appreciated the conversation, though, because he's not oh, like a very hardcore happen. gamer and he played all the Dead Space games. You love to hear it, though. You're like, oh, that's what cool. I mean. Like, that's cool. I hope I don't get like that in my life. I don't think I will, but I pray that I don't. Or I just stop playing video games. The goal is to retire and to somehow move up into the mountains of Montana or somehow make my way over to Switzerland and having a very, very isolated piece of land in a wooden cabin. And I just have my TV and a gaming console. I so think I, I know. I think I know why you want to get out of San Antonio. My friend Charles Barkley told me all about that. Is this relating to the top of the, the podcast list not, that you have here? I'm not, not going to say any more. You don't have to say it out loud, but it is just not if it is. Yeah, yes. Okay. Is. <laughs> I'm going to try to work in one of those references in every single episode until the end of time. No. Without actually saying anything offensive, I'm going to try my best. Which will inevitably okay. fail at some point. Well, I'll keep my mouth shut so I don't have to enable you. Okay. <laughs> All right, it's steak dinner for me tonight, though. All right, well, before we go, guys, we've got a ton of shows on this channel now. It's pretty awesome. We got, uh, we'll be back here next Monday, same time, same place. But we've got, let's see, we've got Nemesis Insider every Thursday, same time. 
which is they're interviewing Nemesis streamers, influencers, and creators, getting to know them better. We got Nemesis Overload, which is a competitive gaming show every Saturday at 6. And we got Jester's Core, the Nemesis Dungeons and Dragons, every Sunday at 6, which I've caught a little bit of here and there. And I got to say, the graphics they are using and the production is awesome, and it makes for a really good show. So you guys should totally watch that. And there's a trivia show coming soon. And I think Jada is just going to be in the chat and answer every single question correctly, and nobody else will ever have a chance to win. I don't actually have that much knowledge. I'm not going to okay. lie. Okay. <laughs> uh, one last shout out. Um, Devil is a part-timer. Season 2 is coming out, so it's uh, new episodes every Thursday. But, oh, I got to tell you something. Nine years later. A, I started the new anime Bastard on Netflix. Uh, I made it two episodes before I quit. Uh, but I did. Uh, I started a 21-hour summary of the entire berserk franchise on youtube because i have a longer commute to work now so i've been listening to this 21 hour youtube video on my way to and from work and so far so good what a what an absolute sigma male to just actually create nearly an entire day's worth of content Dude, and post it on youtube it's so funny because in in the, the very first he, it didn't it wasn't actually that he did it in individual videos like breaking down each Oh, like so chapter or volume but then he went through and compiled no he did in the very first episode he's like i've been talking about this one for a long time you know i should probably stop here and, and uh move on to the next chapter uh before I, I put together a video that's like 20 hours long and then like it actually the whole series he puts it all together in one video and it actually became 21 hours long which was like perfect he's like this is exactly what i want this is amazing i wonder how long that took to upload dude yeah. It had to have been at least like two days. Long time. Hopefully he did it on his uh work phone's hotspot. Like I don't forget, man. Midnight mass. Gotta give it it gotta I, gotta watch it, man. So, so the thing with that is my wife wants to watch it with me. And we've been saying we're gonna watch it for ages. <laughs> and like I can't watch it by myself. She can't watch it by herself. So we just hopefully now that we're moved in, we can find some time find the time it's worth it is it only like five episodes oh no it's it's pretty long is it like i thought it was only like five for some reason i could be wrong we watched we watched good. haunting of hill house together and we did enjoy that Ooh, i love the second one i didn't watch the first one but the second one was really good the one with the uh lady i didn't, in the pond. S- didn't see that one we saw wait haunting of hill house or the other house because isn't the second the one called like haunting of some other house haunting of bly house or some hill doesn't. or something like that manor I think it's Blind Manor. Blind Manor. Like Manor. Yeah. That one, fire. Like that one, actually. That guy, he, that's the same guy uh, who makes um, Midnight Mass. Yeah, that's why I said. I mean, we, got, we yeah. did watch that one, and that's pretty good. So. Yeah. I did like Blind Manor. That one was really interesting. I, that guy knows how to like pull out your heartstrings, or at least mine. And make yeah, I think he's becoming a things. really well, well respected uh, director and showrunner. I, th- I think mm-hmm. he's getting. For, for the horror genre, I think he's definitely building a name for himself. All right, guys, we are going to head out. We're going to show our sponsors real quick. And then I don't know if we are rating anybody tonight or not. Maybe maybe we will. But thanks for watching. We'll be back here next Monday. And you have Nemesis Insider coming on Thursday. So be back here then. We'll see you in the next episode, guys.